Hello everyone and welcome back. If this is your first time, I hope you'll stay. Espero que te quedes. Now today, I'm going to go through a part of your Spanish learning journey that you don't love so much um, and that is grammar. So, and the grammar we like, the, the part of the grammar we like to ignore because as English speakers, we often struggle with this. You guessed it, the subjunctive, the subjunctive. But I do believe that if we bite off small chunks, um, we'll be able to cope with it. And we won't find it so difficult in the end. It's just bit by bit. So today we're going to focus on the El presente perfecto del subjuntivo. So the present perfect of the subjunctive. So, <sighs> are you ready? Are you ready? You're ready, you're ready. Okay, so let's go over it once more. What is the present perfect del subjuntivo? Okay, what is it? Well, it's, it's pretty much the same as the present perfect in the indicative. So, I'll give you an example. I have lived. Yo he vivido. You have eaten. Tu has comido. So basically, it's you form it by using the verb to have. So in English, to have. In Spanish, haber. Okay? To have. Now, in the present perfect, which you've seen, the indicative, it's just yo he comido. I've eaten. Tu has comido. So it's um, e, as, a, hemos, and so on. Okay? It's, it's that in the present indicative. Plus a, d, o. So for a, r verbs, it would finish in ado, and for e, r, and i, r verbs, it would, the indicative, the past participle would finish in ido. So ado or ido. He comido. Has bailado. Hemos corrido. That's the present perfect. So what's the difference when we change it to the subjunctive? There isn't much. There, <laughs> it's pretty much the same. The only thing we're doing in the subjunctive is that we're applying weirdo. Weirdo. Do you remember weirdo? I am sure that your teacher um, has taught you weirdo in Spanish, especially if you're in year 11 and you're year 12. Um, year 11s and year 12s will definitely know what I say when I say subjunctive and weirdos. You know it because we've been drumming this home to you since forever. But just in case we have any lower school um, students here, I'm just going to go over what it means when we say weirdo in relation to Spanish and sub the subjunctive. So when we say weirdo, we mean that you apply it to talk about the, the wishes, wishes, so we have weirdo here. W means wishes, E means emotions, I mean impersonal um, expressions, R, recommendations or requests, D for doubt, and obviously all the ojala sentences. So ojala mean, meaning you're wishing something or hopefully something will happen or um, you, you're desiring something. Okay, so it's the weirdo is what we refer to it as the weirdo because it is the side of grammar that we struggle with the most. And so because we find it so hard, we don't understand it, we're just going to tag it as weird. It's just weird. The subjunctive is weird. We don't get it, but we will get it after this because we're going to work on it a lot. So, el presente perfecto del subjuntivo is the same as it is in the indicative, except that we apply weirdo, okay? We use it when we want to talk about um, emotions, okay? Feelings, wishes, desires, and ojala, okay? So it's very, very easy. So what we're going to do is, we're going to grab the verb haber, which is to have, 
and then we're going to conjugate it into the subjunctive, which is this. Aya, yo aya, I have. Tu ayas, you have. El o ella aya, he or she has. Nosotros ayamos, we have. Vosotros ayais, you plural have. Ellos aya, they have. Okay? And then you go to add it to a verb, and if the verb finishes in ado, in AR it's going to be ado. If it finishes in ER or IR, it's going to be ending in the past participle, it's going to be either. I hope I'm not losing you. Okay? So the past participle. What's the past participle? The past participle is the part of the verb. So the verb that we would add to have when we're talking about something that's happened in the past, but it still, retain, um, it, it still pertains to now, okay? It still has relevance now. So for example, if I was to say, uh, I have always loved you, it means obviously I started loving you in the past, but I still love you today in the present, okay? Or I've lived in Wiltshire, for 20 years. He vivido en Wiltshire 20 años. I've lived, so you started living in this place years ago and you're still living there. So that's the present perfect, okay? Right, <laughs> now that we've got that sorted, what you need to do is make sure that you know how to dissect, you know how to get the root of the verb, take off the ER, add the I, I-D-O or take off the A-R and add your A-D-O. Bailar. A-R gone. Bailar. You would take it off and you would put ado. Bailado. Vivir. Take off the I-R. Vivido. Okay. I have lived. Okay. Now some of these might be, just as it is in English, irregular. Now, you might have seen the verb hacer, which is to make. We're not going to say hacido. We're going to say hecho. I have, I have done. Now, the word cubrir, which is to cover, for example, cubrir, to cover. You're not going to say he cubrido. No, 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 no. You're going to say E cubierto. So these are irregular ones um, that you would need to study. Uh, discover wouldn't be um, either, it would be descubierto. And there's lots of those that we would have seen. Poner, which is to put on, puesto. Just as we have them in English, we have lots of irregular past participles in English. You know, there's some that you really have to stop as English speakers and think, oh my gosh, how do we put that in the past? Or how do we put it in the past participle? And luckily for us, some of them are the same in the past, simple as, the, as they are in the, in the past participle. For example, um, and a very easy one, read, to read. I read, I have read. It's the same in the past simple as it is in the past participle. Or what else? Um, okay, this is a bit different. It's irregular as well. Drive. I drove, but in the in the subjunctive it would subjunctive it would be I have driven. In the past, in the present perfect, it would be hi, um, I have driven. Okay, and then a really odd one. Seek, seek, buscar, seek. What would be? the past participle of seek. Let me know down below. That's a really difficult one because we always have to stop and think. I always had trouble with seek uh, with, when I was younger with uh, um, conjugating that into the, and I'd always say the wrong thing. Mr. Mason, my English teacher, made me learn that. Love him. Well, I hope he's still around somewhere. Anyway, <laughs> I digress. <laughs> right, so where were we? So I'm going to give you some examples, okay? So the only difference that you have for the present perfect subjunctive is that you're applying the weirdo, okay? You applied it to emotions, 
um, recommendations and ohala and all of these. So I'm going to give you some sentences. These are all verbs that um, are related to feelings. So you have kre, kre, which is to believe, temer, which is to fear, okay? Kre, temer, lamentar, which is to be sorry, dudar, to doubt, sorprender, which is to surprise. So let's look at a few sentences. La profe, which is la profesora, in short, la profesora, la profe, no cree que tú hayas suspendido el examen. So, let's break it down. The teacher doesn't think that you failed the exam. So if you see, creer is a, <laughs> is a word that is such belief, again, feelings, emotions. La profe no cree, okay? She doesn't believe, which is um, in the um, present simple there. And again, the key word, que, which separates the two clauses, okay? La profe no cree que tú hayas suspendido el examen. So the teacher doesn't believe that you failed the exam. You see how that works? It works as it does in all of the subjunctive. It's divided into two clauses. It's divided by the que, the word que. I don't believe that something else has happened. Okay? Temer, to fear. Tememos, we fear, que le haya pasado algo terrible. Terrible. Tememos, tememos, que le haya pasado algo terrible. We fear something awful has happened. Le haya pasado. Something has happened to him. Le haya pasado. Something has happened to him. Okay? We fear. Again. Okay? Fear. Emotion. Okay? Lamento. I am sorry. Lamentar is to be sorry. Lamento que tu papá te ha dejado ahí solo. I am sorry that your dad has left you there alone. I am sorry that this has happened to you. Okay? To doubt. Duda, dudamos, we doubt, dudamos que, we doubt that, haya sido él. We doubt that it was him, okay? We doubt that it was him. And the last one, sorprender, to surprise. Me sorprende, it surprises me, it surprises me, the me goes at the beginning. Me sorprende, acts the same as me encanta, me gusta that sort of structure. Me encanta. Okay? So, me sorprende que haya pagado Jill. Porque es muy tacaña. Okay? It surprises me that Jill has paid. Because she's very stingy. Okay? I'm surprised that Jill paid or has paid because she's really stingy. Yeah? She doesn't like to pay, so it surprises me that she's paid. Okay, it surprises me that she's paid because she's very stingy. So, it's not that hard. All you need to do is learn the present, the, the perfect, uh, <laughs> the subjective form of the verb haber, which is haya, hayas, haya, hayamos, hayais, hayan, and then you add it to a verb by taking off the AR, the ER, or the IR, and adding ADO or IDO, not forgetting your KE, which is the magic word, and then adding or applying our weirdo, our weirdo situations. Is it a recommendation? Is it an emotion? Is it fear? Is it happiness? Is it alegría, sorpresa, okay? Is it me encanta? Okay, so all these words that we use to express emotions, you use it. Suggestions also. Okay, um, this is it. Have a little practice. Learn your irregular past participle in Spanish and in English because sometimes, even though we're English speakers, we get a bit um, 
iffy in doubt and we doubt ourselves when it comes to a past participle. And this is the amazing thing when you learn a new language. It forces you to become even more, to, 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 to get a greater understanding of your own language. And who doesn't want that? It's a plus for us. It's a plus for us. Okay, and so with that, I hope that you've learned something new today. And, os voy a dejar porque ahora tengo clase. Hasta pronto, chicos. Adiós.